Good morning, everyone. It's Friday. Good Friday. April the 14th, 2017. And I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Um, I have uh, want to talk about a subject today. Um, but first, I'd like to say the Our Father. So please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, I ask you for the gift of teaching and um, I ask you, Father, to oversee my words, um, that they are in line with what you would want people to hear. I ask Holy Spirit to speak through me um, and instruct and guide me through this message. Amen. Uh, a couple of days ago, maybe about three or four days ago, I put out a video about you you can't serve two masters. And um, there's a situation that, a very complicated situation that believers in Christ um, are, are, are involved in situations. We are, we are strong believers we are convicted by the Holy Spirit and um, we, we ask Holy Spirit to cleanse us of any addictions or oppress, oppression that we may have in our own lives. But what about the lives of the people that lived with us that we love? Many of them are not saved. Many of them believe that they are walking with Christ but are living in sin. How do we handle these situations? This is a very, very difficult situation for believers. And um, on that video that I put up, um, a sister had sent me a comment. Um, because the, the message there was that we are not to serve two masters. And this sister wrote to me and said, I'm not going to mention her name, but she said, this message was for me. I am humbled by the Holy Spirit. Please, please, please pray for me as I am a parent who has offered love and support to a child whose lifestyle is not godly. I feel a co-conspirator in this as I support this person. And the father has recently really illuminated his chastisement of my role in this sin. My participation by allowing my love for the child to make me compromise the way and commandments of God. I humbly request anyone here to please pray for the Father to help me serve him and get out of this entanglement with my child. Above all, I desire God to show my child what he is doing is out of God's will. I have compromised my faith in helping this child, and I repent, but need supernatural assistance to address this in love. I have Holy Spirit is goosebumping me all over. But also in actions that are obedient to the Most High. Thank you. This is the most heartfelt 
expression of what I was trying to speak about in this video. That it's a tightrope, it's a walk. You know how the tightrope, when uh, um, uh, a tightrope walker is on that line, he has a, a, a pipe in his hand, a balance pipe, and if he goes a little bit to one side, he tips it to keep his balance. And what is that balance? That balance, the objective to God's children is always forgiveness and restoration. Okay? Now, you may have somebody in your family who is an alcoholic. Okay? You know that God is against that. Okay. Are you aiding and abetting and enabling that person by bringing them a six pack of beer or a bottle of Johnny Walker? And answer that question. If you have a diabetic in your family and you know they're diabetic, are you bringing them Twinkies and cupcakes? Only you can answer that question. If you have a morbidly obese person living with you that's over 600 pounds, are you putting them in the kitchen to do, to, to do work, work and feed you food? Are you, are you bringing unnecessary calories to them? Are you feeding their addiction, bringing food in when they can't go out and get it for themselves? Only you can answer that question. Um, you have um, someone in your family that you know is a pedophile. Are you keeping silent and lying by omission? Lying by omission is, is not saying anything and covering for them. Only you can answer that question. Do you have someone who's living a homosexual lifestyle in your family and celebrating weddings and clicking champagne glasses to celebrate their love, which to the Lord is an abomination? Only you can answer that question. Do you have children growing up that are in same-sex relationships that are going as boys that are girls that are going as boys that are boys that are going as girls to their prom did you buy them that tuxedo or that prom dress are you aiding and abetting sin are you enabling that sin even though you're a Christian only you can answer that question Believers are supposed to lovingly hold one another accountable for maintaining behavioral, behavioral standards. Read that again. Believers are supposed to lovingly hold one another accountable for maintaining behavioral standards. Consistent with biblical teachings and it says so in Matthew 18 verse 15 to 35 and Ephesians 4 25 to 32 which I'm going to read in a moment <clears throat> and Ephesians 4 25 32 contains other examples of inappropriate behavior but that does not extend to judgment okay just because they're in sin and in inappropriate behavior it doesn't extend to judgment or condemnation the former belonging to God only and the latter 
eliminated at the cross. Now, today is when Jesus was dying on the cross. It's Good Friday. So he, Jesus put himself through all of that to die for these sins. These sins that I just spoke about and many, many others that I didn't speak about. There's a dual objective here to the believer. The dual objective of such action must always be forgiveness and restoration. So your position as a Christian must always be to forgive what they're doing and to pray for restoration that they may be restored back to Christ from their sin. That's the objective. The objective is the goal of the Christian is to forgive and to pray for restoration, not judge and condemn. Okay? Now, what are we to do? How are we to, um, the trap that, that Christians fall into is that they fear losing the love of the child of the husband, of the sister, of the brother, of the friend. Okay, they they fear that if they expose their belief in God and what the commandments of God and what God of the Bible says, that these things are lawless to the Father and abomination to the Father that they will lose the love of that person or the friendship of that person or the support of that person okay and this fear of proclaiming the conviction of your own belief is the trap that will pull you into being in agreement with these abominations and sins. Um, you have to understand one thing. You cannot force anyone to change their lifestyle or their behavior because the Father gave us free will. And Satan is the one who forces you. God gives you free will to come to him. So you must not force your children to come to him. You must be the pillar of strength and love and affection and guidance. And when you put God first, even over your own biology, okay, you run the risk of being abandoned by some, someone that you love for proclaiming the truth. And this dilemma is what makes Christians all around the world compromise their beliefs for sin. And today we're reminded of that as Jesus bled on the cross, as he bled, on, bled to death on the cross. And that blood is on the altar in heaven, atoning for those sins. We need to remember what Jesus suffered for those sins and not compromise. Because when we compromise for those sins, we shun in, 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 in one way what our Lord did for us. I hope that makes sense. Now I'm going to read... Matthew 18, verses um, 15 to 35. Now, these are Jesus' words. Okay. They're in red. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault 
between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. For where, the, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants? And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he said, and he laid hands on him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou hast desired me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one of his brother their trespasses. So you see, we are to forgive, and we are uh, to pray for restoration. That is the way of the Christian. Okay. Um, now I'm going to move to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 to 32. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, 
that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And ye be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So this is how we are to be when it comes to sin. Sin, we pray for sin to leave our own vessels and we pray for sin to evacuate the vessels of those that we love. We forgive them for they know not what they do and we pray for the restoration of our loved ones. Father, I pray, I pray that you give wisdom and power to overcome any of your children who are in agreement with corruption, abomination, or sinful behaviors of loved ones. Give them a tender, loving, kind heart. to forgive them and pray the wisdom of prayer to pray for their restoration and salvation without judgment or condemnation. Father, as you know, this is such a dilemma for many, many people and a delicate balance, I ask you, Father in heaven, to give them the balance, the structure, and the wisdom to know what to do and what to say in these very, very difficult situations in our lives. Pashunda for to care the percent if it eat the becant that a sort of a shunder book or say. America tanda that a poor cosite fee the person that put a television the rebecca send the petitanda. Mokoton the photo tear the petend if it eat. Mirica sanda for a barcason the photo chair. Eleke sanda kanda tata pere ke sende feti turbo ko sorbo shote tepe. I love you, Father. I love you with all my heart. Amen. as we remember what happened to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today on the cross. Let's always be reminded of what he did to cleanse us of these sins. I love you. Jesus loves you. He died for you. Never forget how much he loves you. Never. Never forget. He's coming very, very soon. Sooner than you think. But keep praying. Keep forgiving. 
and keep looking up.